Speed! Give me speed! It's working! It's working! Now I know a lot of you out there are thinking, hang on, this guy is always harping on about 4K video editing being a better investment from a NAS than it is from external storage. But I do know that there are budgets involved and I know that not all of you need a NAS. So that obviously leads us on to the next logical question, which is, which is the best external drive for 4K video editing? Though more specifically than that, I want to discuss which SSD drive is the best for editing 4K footage. Hey, and welcome to Studio Pro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson and here we work smarter, not harder. Why? Because it gives you time to be more creative. Now let's get into this because the SSD that you need will highly depend on the codec and format of the 4K footage that you're trying to edit with. As we know, not all flavors of video are the same and some are more data hungry than others in terms of read and write speeds. For the sake of this video and to cover all of our bases, I'm just gonna assume that the highest level of 4K footage that you might be editing with is a ProRes 4444, four fours, not XQ. And that you, we're gonna assume a normal frame rate of around 30 frames per second. This on average requires 165 megabytes per second transfer rate. But going down to ProRes HQ or ProRes 422 would require substantially lower bit rates than that. But let's cover our bases here. This is what we're going with. Oh, and the other thing to remember is that this is for single camera editing, or you know, editing one stream of 4K footage. For multicam editing, or you know, split screens, you're going to need to times that by the amount of streams that you need to edit with. So if you have a three camera setup, a normal setup, and you are editing ProRes 44444, and you have three streams coming in, you need three times 165 megabytes per second bandwidth available. And because this is a fairly common thing to do in editing, I'm gonna assume that you need a drive to be able to do that with. So the amount of data that we need to be able to transfer is up to about 495 megabytes per second. Let's just call it 500. And that's between the drive and the computer. Why does all of this matter? Well, it matters because not every SSD drive can offer you the same read and write speeds. SATA SSDs, for example, can transfer data at around about 350, sometimes up to about 550 megabytes per second. That's not quite enough for us to be able to edit at three cameras, definitely not four camera, multi-camera editing, but it would cover quite a lot of people in standard 4K editing. SSD RAIDs can offer you speeds of 2,800 megabytes per second read. And if we look at NVMe drives, they can go from six, 7,000 megabytes per second, all the way up to 10,000 megabytes per second. So they can handle absolutely anything. So as you can see, there are vast differences in the transfer rates for different codecs and SSD drives. Another logical question here is whether we want internal storage or external storage so that you can take it around, it's portable, you can use it in the field. Both have equal merit, but both also have limitations too. You will generally get better speeds out of an SSD connected to a computer internally via PCIe in an M2 format, but you then are limited to using that SSD on that PC only. External SSDs, on the other hand, are portable and can be taken pretty much anywhere, but they do need to be connected by USB or Thunderbolt, which has another component that can slow down our transfer rate, and that is... <laughs> You guessed it, it's the cable that goes from your SSD to your computer and how much bandwidth that can carry. Different types of USB connections have different transfer rates that they're capable of and they've recently been reclassified. But you also have Thunderbolt 3 or 4, generally not Thunderbolt 2 anymore, to choose from these days. And as you can see, these are the different types of speeds that different USB types can offer you. We therefore need to choose an external drive with a cable connection that is fast enough to carry the bandwidth necessary to edit 4K footage. As you could see from that graphic, for single cam editing, we need a connection that is at least USB 3.2 Gen 1 or five gigabits per second. That's 500 megabytes per second. For multi-cam editing, this just won't work without proxies. Nearly, pro tippers, nearly. There is just one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the storage size of your SSD drive as well. While it doesn't theoretically matter what size storage you have to edit with, it does matter 
in terms of storing your 4K footage. Why? Because 4K footage is inherently larger in file size than HD footage is. And so you'll need more space for the footage to reside whilst you're editing from it. 500 gigabytes or even a terabyte of space on an SSD is just not gonna cut it when it comes to heavy uncompressed codecs like ProRes 4444. If you've been rolling for hours, then you are well out of luck trying to store that on a small SSD. All right. Let's split this up because not all of you are gonna be looking for an internal SSD and not all of you are gonna be looking for an external SSD either. I'm gonna put links to all of the drives that I'm gonna mention down in the description below because I am gonna mention a few here. I also want to mention that at this point, what I'm talking about this SSD drive for is for your scratch disk. It's where your media will sit when you're editing it. This is not for storing your operating system on as well. It's not for where you should be storing projects long-term. For the best editing experience, you need to store your media that is going to be edited from on a separate drive from everything else and don't write to it at the same time either. This will give you the most fluid, latency-free editing experience. Okay, let's kick it off with the first external SSD with speeds read and write speeds way over 500 megabytes per second using USB 3.2 Gen 2. Two terabytes of storage space is the SanDisk Pro G40 two terabyte SSD. Why? Because this thing has Thunderbolt and USB-C compatibility. Using the Thunderbolt 3 connection, you can get read speeds of 2,700 megabytes per second and write speeds of 1,900 megabytes per second. If you're going to connect via USB-C, then you're gonna get read and write speeds of around about 1,000 megabytes per second or one gigabyte per second. More than enough then for multicam editing of four streams of ProRes 4444. It retails for $450 or 500 pounds and will have your editors absolutely flying through 4K footage. If your budget doesn't stretch that far and you don't need Thunderbolt speeds, but still want up to 10 gigabit per second speeds via USB-C, then the Samsung T7 Touch will allow you to read and write at 1000 megabytes per second, plus it has the added ability of fingerprint security, allowing AES 256-bit encryption. And that retails for $200 or 225 pounds. Okay. Let's move on to internal storage now. There's kind of two roads to go down here. There's like SATA or there's NVMe disks in like an M.2 format. Unfortunately, SATA disks only reach around about 550 megabytes per second at the top end. This will do most editors for single cam 4K editing. But if you're in the world of multicam editing or you want split screens or you, you, know, you want to go above just being able to have one piece of footage on the screen at any one time, then it's gonna seriously degrade your experience by going with a SATA drive. However, they are much cheaper than their SSD counterpart. And so if you're looking for more bang for your buck in terms of storage space, then the Samsung 870 Evo 4 terabyte is a great one to look at. It has read speeds of around 550, 560 megabytes per second and write of 530 megabytes per second. And the four terabyte retails for around about $265, 285 pounds. Moving into the much, much, much faster NVMe world, I have two disks to show you. Now these disks can achieve these speeds that I'm about to tell you because they are connected directly into the motherboard via PCIe slots and in computers these days using Gen 4 or 5 of PCIe, depending on the age of your computer, you really will be astonished at the speeds that these can reach. But you will need to check that your motherboard can accept them and that you have a slot available on your motherboard too. Using PCIe 4, which most computers in the last few years do have now, you can get the Samsung 990 Pro SSD, which is capable of speeds of around 7,500 megabytes per second read and write of 6,900 megabytes per second. Yeah, that's right, 7.5 gigabytes per second. It's in an M.2 format, so most M.2 slots can accept it. And two terabytes of this disk retails for around about $180, $180. If you have a PC with a PCIe 5 slot, which is one of the newer PCIe's available, then you can get the Gigabyte Aorus Gen 5 10,000 SSD, which it absolutely rips. This thing rips at 10,000 megabytes per second read. That's 10 gigabytes a second and 9,500 megabytes per second write. Two terabytes of this disk 
retails for around about $450 to $500 or 350 to 400 pounds. If you want the advantages of RAID storage, but using SSDs and connected over Thunderbolt, then I have a beauty of a disc for you. It's called Thunderblade, and it allows four NVMe drives to be housed in one enclosure that has two Thunderbolt 3 outputs on the back of it and allows read speeds of 2,800 megabytes per second and write speeds of 2,450 megabytes per second. This means multiple editors can connect to this thing and you can even daisy chain them too. It comes with the disks already inside it, so you just need to decide how much storage space you actually want. As an example, two terabytes in this thing costs around $900, but if you're going to go for RAID storage and you want to increase your capacity because you can with this thing, you can get, for example, eight terabytes of blazing fast portable storage for around $1,550 or 1,750 pounds. Now this is the part of the video where I say, that's great and all, but how many of these drives are you gonna buy throughout the year because you've constantly filled them up and you run out of storage space. You could instead buy a NAS and have an SSD cache with inside it for fast access to media and have HDD storage for longer term storage, all the while getting 10 gigabit per second speeds for multicam 4K editing and being able to have remote editors connected to the NAS too. How do I do all of this? Well, just check out my playlist on NASes over here. <laughs>